It's a beautiful fall day here in New Jersey, and I'm headed out in a few minutes. I've got a doctor's appointment, uh, then I'm going to the grocery store, and then driving into Bernardsville to have lunch with my wife. All the kind of normal daily activities that we take for granted until we face the possibility that someone is going to take the car keys away. For someone with mild cognitive impairment, that's a real concern. Getting that diagnosis can be so shocking and frightening, and all sorts of worries race through your head. One of the first is likely to be, do I have to quit driving? That's a loaded question, and one you want to consider carefully. But don't assume the worst. In most cases, people with mild cognitive impairment can continue to drive safely, often for years. So let's talk about why that is. Hi, my name's Tony Deering. I write an award-winning column on brain health and prevention of dementia for NJ.com and the Star Ledger, and I operate GoCogno.com, a website for people with mild cognitive impairment. If you've been diagnosed with MCI, you do not want to become a danger to yourself or anyone else on the road. And speaking statistically, you probably aren't. One recent study looked at 57 adults over the age of 65 with mild cognitive impairment and compared them to 265 adults with normal memory for their age. What they found was the people with MCI scored slightly lower on driving tests, but the difference was insignificant, and both groups scored high enough to be considered safe drivers. Now that doesn't mean that every person with mild cognitive impairment is safe to drive, but it really does underscore the difference between mild cognitive impairment and dementia because MCI is not dementia. And this is one case where there really is a difference. A person diagnosed with Alzheimer's is going to have to stop driving fairly soon. They may potentially be able to drive for another year or two, but eventually they will have to give up the car keys. In fact, the concern is serious enough that your doctor would be required to report you to the State Motor Vehicle Commission and you'd have to take a test and pass that driving test in order to continue to drive in the short term. Now with mild cognitive impairment, it's completely different. Both the American and Canadian Medical Associations have taken the stance that mild cognitive impairment does not warrant a loss of driving privileges. In fact, unlike a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, if you have MCI, neither you nor your doctor is even required to report that to the state. Now you still need to make a decision that's right for you. And to help you do that, I invite you to go to my website, gocogno.com, where I have published an article with safety tips for driving with MCI. This will help show you how you can continue to drive safely and also help you know when it may be time to consider giving up the keys. Another thing that's important to understand is that in most cases, signs that your driving ability is slipping occur long before you are likely to be involved in any serious accident. So if you know what those signs are and you can recognize them, that's another way to stay safe and be comfortable and secure on the road. I've put together a list of 20 of those common warning signs and if it's helpful, I'd be glad to send it to you. Send me an email to Tony Deering at gocogno.com, and I'll be glad to send you that list of 20 common warning signs. So I hope you found this helpful, and sorry, but I am gonna sign off now. I've gotta to get to my doctor's appointment. But thanks for joining me today, and I'll hope to see you again next week. Until then, as always, 
be kind to your mind.